good morning my dear students we shall go to the next module in the sequence of the understanding of the fundamentals of mechanics in this uh, schedule we have been talking about the velocity and acceleration uh, in various uh, forms especially velocities like average velocity average acceleration instantaneous velocity instantaneous acceleration and so on the present module is named as the integration of the equations of motion what is meant by this integration of equations of motion we shall see now here equation of motion means when a body or even a particle or whatever you call it, it is traveling suppose when it is traveling in any direction, in any path, whatever the case may be, its velocity and its acceleration may be changing or may be constant with the time. So the variation of how this velocity and acceleration is happening, whether it is with constant acceleration, then velocity will be changing. When the constant velocity, then displacement will be changing. So we have got these parameters with us, the velocity, the acceleration and displacement. These parameters will be changing with the time, either one or two or all the three may be changing with the time. If this is the case, then whatever the way they are varying, when you put them into equation, then we call it as equation of motion. For example, we had said 2 is equal to V1 plus a t, we had get this equation once like this. This is the v1 is the velocity at t1, v2 is velocity at t2, and this t is nothing but t2 minus t1 that interval. So, like that, we had said one equation. Similarly, we had another equation that x is equal to x0 plus v0 t plus half a t square. We are given such an equation also earlier. So, this tells you about how the display, the position of the body is varying with the time. The v0 is the velocity at t is equal to 0, velocity is v0. So, like this, we have given some equations. These are what are known as the equations of motion. And what is meant by integrating these equations? Where do we require to integrate them? And how it is to be done? Which are going to be discussed now here in this module. Let us think of a body moving with constant velocity. Suppose there is a body moving with constant velocity. Velocity is not changing with the time. So, therefore, only position will be changing with the time. We say the position is given by the equation x is equal to x0 plus v0 into t, where v0 is the velocity at t is equal to 0 and it remains constant throughout, the same velocity will be there. Only as t proceeds, v remains constant, x will be changing according to the equation here. So, this can be shown graphically also. We had given this earlier. Suppose you write the display, displacement here and suppose we show the variation of displacement with time graphically, it will be like this. We will show on this. Now, this shows a straight line there. So, this displacement goes on increasing with the time like that. Position goes on increasing. We have shown x on the y axis only to show it is the variable there. Dependent variable, this is independent variable on the x axis we have shown here. This is time uh, displacement, the position versus displacement. Uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, position versus time graph we have given here. So, we know this graph represents this equation. We want to find out how much uh, displacement is there in a given interval. Suppose from x1 to say some x2, you want to find out what is the displacement. If you just take the difference of these two, that gives you the difference of the displacement. So, x1 to x2, that is the difference. This is x2 minus x1, that is the difference. That is the displacement we get on the graph. Then, the slope of the curve gives us, if this is taking place in a given time delta t, then x2 minus x1 by delta t 
gives us the velocity when in that interval. So this velocity is what we are called as average velocity during that interval. During that interval that is called average velocity displacement by time taken. When you want to have the velocity at any one instant only, then what happens? You must make this delta t as close as 0. That means reduce the width on the x-axis here, make it as, as 0. Then you will come to approach a point there. Then what you get is the instantaneous velocity at some particular time, say, and that is given by limit delta x by delta t as delta t tends to 0 and we call it as dx by dt. That's how the instantaneous velocity has been defined in the earlier module. So this process is simple here because it is moving with a constant velocity. You take this d delta x x2 minus x1 by delta t, particular interval there. Anywhere you take, you will get the same slope. This slope will be, this is nothing but slope only. If you take this angle as theta, this is nothing but slope. Tan theta only will come there. Because slope is constant, whatever interval you take here, wherever you take, you will get the value of, value of average velocity the same. So even if you make it to a point when delta t becomes as small, then instantaneous velocity also will be equal to the same value as the average velocity. So when a body is moving with constant velocity like that, then the average velocity will be equal to the velocity at any particular instant also in the path. These are vectors of course. You must remember these are vector notation only I am talking. So velocity means vector over there. Need not say again. So this is what we have seen. But suppose the, this, the velocity is not constant. Suppose the velocity is varying. Then how will be the graph? Then we have to think of variety of a graph like this. Suppose the velocity is given in the graph like this. Velocity time curve we call it. Velocity time graph we call it. Velocity time graph. If velocity is constant like what you have shown earlier, you will get a straight line parallel to the x-axis like that. Then over any interval you take, the distance travelled is given by the area under the curve here. Suppose from here, the time here is t, then here it is velocity is v, then displacement r is equal to that dis velocity into time will come there directly, automatically. This is what we get as the displacement we can show in the form of x also x minus x0 or x simply we can call it as v into t that's what you have shown in the first equation earlier just now so this is all right as far as traveling with constant velocity i told you just now average velocity will be the same as instantaneous velocity and therefore calculating the displacement under the area uh, with the area of the curve also becomes easier because this is nothing but this is uh, v from here and this is time, therefore it is v into t and v into t is nothing but displacement in the particular case here. Suppose the body is not traveling with constant velocity, it is going with increasing velocity, say. Then how will be the curve here? We had seen that also in the earlier module, I will just refer to it here. All these things are to be revised before we are going for the integration of these equations. Suppose there is a velocity time curve graph like that. It is a constantly increasing velocity. That means the increase in velocity is constant. Velocity is not constant. Increase in velocity is constant. So this is the case of constant acceleration we said. This is the case of constant acceleration. Here the velocity is v0 at t is equal to 0. Here the velocity may be written here as vt. This is the time interval and we had drawn this graph earlier if you remember the area under the curve now gives the displacement x minus x0 and the area is given by the two areas here area of the triangle here area of the rectangle here and we had shown this is the area of the triangle plus the rectangle this is what we had shown. This as a into t, this as uh, half a t, this is a into t, this v0. So this is v0 into t gives you this area, rectangle area. That is given as half a t square. 
because half into this into that and that is a t this is t so it is half a t square we have done this uh, formula we worked out there as we got the equation as v0 t plus half a t square this is the case of constant acceleration velocity is increasing here also if you want to know any particular uh, acceleration during any interval just like what we said earlier suppose you want to find acceleration at any interval you can just take that interval and the slope there gives you the acceleration similarly the area if you take here this gives you this displacement during that interval so this will give you displacement during this interval delta t here you want to get the total uh, area the displacement you must get total area like what i said here in the equation this is simple and easy to find like this if it is the case of a simply increasing velocity at constant rate constant acceleration case here sometimes even acceleration may be changing then curve won't be that straight line it will be different it can be a, a, a curve with linear motion also can be there in the graph you can see how it, so in analogy what i said just now if the body is moving with constant acceleration the instantaneous acceleration at any one point will be the same at every point will be the same so there way we are getting a straight line there that is easy to follow and get that there suppose you have now a curve velocity time curve and it is it is something like this say it is a curve now then how do you know what is the displacement in a given time you have to do for example you want to find a displacement from here to here suppose then you have to draw the graph perpendicular here this area gives you the displacement during this time delta t that gives a displacement area gives you displacement but this area if you draw graph only you will know it by equation you will not know it if you are not equation you must know equation of motion separately first i have represented the equation of motion in the form of a graph here to understand better before you go to equation actually suppose now this is the case of a body with changing acceleration well acceleration is not constant then what about the slope here in the case of the straight line the slope was constant throughout we were able to get the slope there clear there but in this case slope is not constant so what happens at every point the will acceleration is different here suppose you want to find out the acceleration at this point what will you do the method is we have said like that you find out the velocity here say we call it as v1 the velocity here is v2 suppose this is t1 this is t2 then v2 minus v1 by t2 minus t1 can be calculated at two different intervals at, at two different times then the ratio will be no this is acceleration what acceleration is that this is the acceleration between this point to that point on the average we call it as average acceleration but you want to find out acceleration at one point suppose there what will you do we have to reduce that and bring the time interval to zero so that means we'll write this as limit limit that v2 minus v1 i make it like this t2 minus t1 where this t2 minus t1 is reduced to zero practically in this limit suppose you calculate what you get now is the acceleration at one instant it is called instantaneous acceleration when you don't write uh, average here it becomes instantaneous acceleration when you say a body is moving with acceleration you are talking only about instantaneous acceleration unless you talk about average acceleration so this is acceleration now so this equation does tells you the slope of the tangent at that point that's what also we had said in the earlier this thing now suppose you want to find out velocity from the acceleration you are not given if velocity is given you will find acceleration that is this method suppose you want reverse method then how do it you want to find out actually from the acceleration velocity to be found now suppose or from the velocity you want to find displacement suppose in this case you want to find displacement this is not displacement time curve displacement over an area is given here that's all so it is this way possible to find out 
instantaneous acceleration from the velocity time curve drawn like this by taking the limit here. This is what we call it as dv by dt as we have said in the last modules that we can always find. Suppose you want to find displacement here over this area. There is another method of doing it also. That is like this. See here. You divide this entire area under this curve. Suppose you want to find out the displacement from here T1 to here T2. Observe this process first. Then we will know how to make it simpler. You want to find out displacement between these two. If you have got a graph like this, you draw the, on the graph and then count the area there and you can find out displacement. That is one way of doing it. We all know about it. How do you do it? This curve represents an equation. Suppose it is given in the form of equation now. Then it becomes difficult. We will know the procedure of how to get that from the equation by taking some uh, analogy from the graph here. This area under this is nothing but taking small areas here. Draw the entire area can be. If you see on the graph paper how are you doing this? We are only counting the area like this. There will be some squares here. We will count that area in this and we will get that area. Similarly, we will get another square here, get that area here and go on doing the entire thing for the entire area available. We go on counting the squares inside there. That means you are dividing the area under the curve into strips like this. This strip is the small delta t there and it gives a small change in velocity here delta v. So, if you now take the area under this, suppose you take the curve to be flat there, say almost flat there, it becomes rectangle now. Area gives now delta v into delta t. This is the area under this strip here. Similarly, under every area under every strip can be taken. So, the entire area can be now divided into strips like that and you make the sigma of all that, then you will get total area, total displacement will come. That displacement is x minus x0 suppose, suppose the total displacement. Suppose. So, net displacement in the entire area if you want, derive small small areas in the strips like this and put them all together like this. So, what is this delta v? It is velocity in this area. This is average velocity in that area, in that strip there into the time interval delta t there. That is what we have done in the process here. This average velocity into time for every strip and go on adding all the strips available there. It is easy if the strips are very discrete in number like that. Suppose the velocity is complicatedly varying, very very quickly varying. There can be even a graph like this. There can be goes on like that say. Whatever may the case may be. If it varies in such a way, it becomes difficult to draw strips like this and count them continuously. And that is that can be done only on the graph. If it is given in the form of equation, you cannot do it. So, we will now evolve a method where equation can be uh, used directly without going to the graph. If you now see this one, according to the definition what we gave, the average velocity into time taken is the displacement. What is the sigma means? Adding the area every step. That means find out average velocity in delta time in this area, then in that and then in that and they on like that. Discreetly go on doing it. Suppose like this you get a complicated curve where the areas are very small, difficult to be known like that. That means delta t is almost equal to 0, is tending to 0. Then this summation discreetly adding is not possible. This summation in mathematics tells you to add discreetly. That method is not possible. Then what is to be done? You must replace this by integration. There is a method in mathematics. We write that as integration. We write the equation like this. Integrate average velocity with the time delta t. Say. This is actually it means we do not write like this ultimately. I will tell you what it is. So, we replace this by this one. When you replace this by this one, delta t must be tending to 0 and average moment, what happens when delta t time becomes 0? The delta v is, becomes instantaneous velocity. Delta t becomes instantaneous velocity there. So, therefore, this becomes instantaneous velocity 
when del t tends to 0, we call it as dt. We put the equation like this. This is the same as that. Only in the limit when delta t tends to become 0. When delta t tends to become 0, then we write the representation of this summation in this form. This is what is called as integration. This is what is told to you in calculus in integration. So this is the way of integrating. So how to integrate them? What will you get the answer from this? That is given in the integration in the calculus itself. Integration is also summing up only. It is a continuous sum up. Summing up continuously from point to point to point to point every moment there. That continuous sum up is there. You take the example of uh, taking a, a sugar cube, say. A, a physical analogy I am just giving you. If you have sugar in form of cubes, you can arrange these cubes one after the other. One after the other, you can add, go on adding one, two, three, four, number of cubes there. One kilogram of sugar can be in the form of cubes. You can put them all one by one, one by one, put together like that. That is adding sugar in the form of cubes discreetly there. Suppose sugar is given as a powder there directly. You have to put all this sugar into a single, you just say one kg of sugar you take from the shop. There won't be such cubes there. The entire thing will be a heap there. So there you have made it as an integrated group there. Integrated group of uh, the, the, the powder there. Integrated powder there. Whereas discrete cubes are the addition there in this case. So if this sigma signifies discrete addition, integration is continuous sum up like this, heaping together quickly, which is not physically possible. You cannot count the number of particles in that uh, uh, powder there in the sugar. Similarly, here also it is not possible to, uh, continuous sum, sum up is not possible like this unless you have got a mathematical method for this. That is developed in calculus. That is what is called integration. So this is what the method of integration is for that. So this we can write, it. position can be given by the equation now as x0 plus integral v dt. Why, where from you want? You want from t1 to t2? Yes, put t1 here, t2 there. In the limits, t1 to t2. This gives you displacement there. This is the method of integration. That's what you mean by, this is integrating the equation of motion. What is the actual equation of motion? It is here. x minus x0 is equal to average velocity into time taken t2 minus t1. That is the actual equation. This equation has been integrated in this way, if you want to find out for very, very short intervals of delta t is tending to 0. That's how we get this equation. So this is integration of this equation. This is the equation which has been integrated like this. It requires to be integrated like this when you want continuous addition there. Similarly, we take up another example. I had written just now the equation. I once again clarify that x minus x0 is equal to integral v dt, I said from uh, t1 to t2 I wrote here. Here I meant that at t1 the displacement is x0, that's what I mean. If the notation is not very clear there, you can write like this also. You can take it from uh, x2 to x1 so that you can easily follow it this way. This way also it can be followed. Here it means at t1 the displacement is, the position is x1, at t2 position is x2 and you can write like this. And therefore, we can write at any given position, you can write like this, v dt with integration there. Suppose you want to integrate from 0 to t, that means you start from 0 and you want to go up to t there, from 0 to t. Then you can write this as, in general this way also, x is equal to x0 plus integral v dt from 0 to t. That means time is equal to 0 displacement is x0 there. So that is how we integrate this equation. We apply the same method to acceleration also. See that one next. If the body is moving with, if the body is moving with varying acceleration say, the graph can be shown like this. We are extending the same method of what you have followed for velocity and time, for acceleration and time here. So acceleration and time. And the, say the, the body is moving with the constant, uh, is not moving with constant acceleration, it is moving with varying acceleration here. So in this case, the area under the curve should give you velocity. So suppose you take from T1 to T2 here. Here the acceleration is A1. Here the acceleration is A2. So what is A2 minus A1? 
you see average acceleration we got it in that interval t2 minus t1 that's what it is so what do you get under the area under that gives you velocity you can see that you can see suppose you draw a small strip here which is rectangular so what you get is average acceleration into time delta t in that time say that is time is delta t suppose so average acceleration in that in that interval and delta t this gives you the area here but by definition we know average acceleration to time is nothing but velocity change in velocity change in velocity is equal to average acceleration that means average acceleration we know for this definition already i am just duplicating it here you can write it as delta v by delta t that is average acceleration you write the same thing with a limit there it becomes instantaneous acceleration in the limit of this delta v by delta t when delta t tends to zero this becomes instantaneous acceleration now you want to find out the uh, acceleration or the change in velocity for the whole area suppose so area under this completely if you take from a1 to a2 that will give you change in velocity from t1 to t2 time time t1 to time t2 that's what you get under this so change in velocity is that area total area change in velocity is total area how do you get this you can get by the method like what we said in the velocity time curve divide the entire area into small strips like that each strips gives you the change in velocity during that time interval there that means that gives you the average velocity the change in velocity in that interval where average acceleration can be known this is acceleration so that if you take it becomes average acceleration into delta t in one strip similarly another strip another strip go on adding all those things continuously that addition is shown by sigma if this addition is continuous we can add one after the other just like what i said in the example of ice cubes there suppose you want to get it continuously it is varying more complicatedly continuously then to get that the method is not simply physical addition like that it is not possible so you want little more involved mathematics there in that we replace this as in the limit of delta t tending to zero we replace this as integral a dt from t1 to t2 we write this what gives you change in velocity if velocity is v2 at t2 v1 at t1 we get this change in velocity in that equation this is what we are going to get there understand so just like a velocity equation we have this integration method for acceleration also suppose you want to integrate from in general you want to get the velocity at any given time then you can extend the same thing writing like this as v0 integral a 0 to t that means you are integrating from t is equal to 0 to g is equal to t with dt this integrate so the integration there and velocity at any given time is therefore given instantaneous velocity at any time is given by as the v0 plus integral a0 a dt 0 to t this is the method of integrating the equations then what will be the answer we get method is all right the concept is all right but how to get the answer for that how do you get the value of this one then you must understand the formula used for this integration in uh, mathematics you observe that in mathematics integration is the uh, converse of the derivation differentiation that means you know a function for example you know a function say ft if you differentiate this function with the time we write like this this is called differentiation this is the differentiation what you get answer here is this is this operation itself is what is called differentiation we call it differentiation if you invert it now if you look back just like multiplication and div multiplication and division 3 into 2 is 6 you know this so now you make it as 6 by 2 it becomes 3 automatically so that means the reverse process there 
Similarly here also, this is differentiation. And the if you if you integrate this one, you will go to the reverse process there. Integration means we write like this integration of all this one. F t by dt. If you integrate like this, this is called integration. If you have, if you have a function is this differentiated, what we get we know. We have seen this example earlier. For example, I wrote this in the earlier module, I write it here. Any function like t to the power n, you differentiate with respect to time t. The formula we have given there is, it is n t power n minus 1. That is the method we have written, written there, differentiation of t n. Now suppose you want to get back n. How do you get from this? t power n minus 1 into is equal to d t power n by dt into 1 by n. That is what you get. n is an integer here, it is a constant generally. So, we can write here as t n minus 1 is equal to d t n by n minus d by dt of t n by t n. This is what we had said the formula earlier. That means when you differentiate this, you will get this. That means t n power minus 1 is equal to differentiation by n. What do you get that? So, you will get this answer there. So, you want to get any function now like this. You must reverse the process of differentiation like this into integration there. So, there what it means here, why, what we write here is, I replace this for t power for you to understand. I will write n minus 1 means of n minus 1, I will write n. So, this equation becomes d t power n plus 1 by n plus 1 by dt. That is the equation. So, you want to get a function like t n and from its differentiation you get this way. That means, instead of f t, suppose you take t n plus 1 by n plus 1, what you get is integral t n. Suppose integrate on both sides here. Suppose put integration on both sides. This is what you got by differentiation. I show you here once again. This is what you got by differentiation. When you integrate, what will you get? The function will come back. When you differentiate, you got this function. When you integrate this one, you will get back the same function, original function again. Similarly, here I wrote here t n. So integrate that now. That means integrate this d t n plus 1 by n plus 1 n plus 1, then what will you get here is, the answer is this function, this is the function inside the operation, this function the operation, that comes as t n plus 1 by n plus 1. That means integration of t power n is equal to t n plus 1 by n plus 1. That is, it has become formula now. Just like we have got formula here, differentiation of t power n is equal to n into t power n minus 1. Reverse will be here like this. So, any functions can be done like that. For example, suppose, and you must write, of course, write here dt, because this dt must be cancelled. So, this dt, this dt, to uh, uh, supplement that, we put like this, and what is remaining is the differentiation of this one, what you get is done here. So, any function generally is given like this. So, we write, I show you an example here. We write the formula here for your information t n dt is equal to t power n plus 1 by n plus 1. One formula I gave it here. Similarly, for various functions, various formula can be evolved. I am just giving one example here. You will be knowing those things more in details in the uh, mathematics class there in calculus. So, suppose you want to integrate t power 5 dt, suppose. And you integrate from the limits t1 to t2. You want to do it. You will get the answer here as t power n plus 1 means 5 plus 1 by 5 plus 1. Here n is 5. Your integration is from uh, t1 to t2. That means the answer is t1 to the power 6, sorry, t2 to the power 6 minus t1 to the power 6. You must first substitute the top limit and then subtract from the lower limit here. So, you put like this. Suppose, I will put another equation. Integration of t power uh, t cubed dt from 0 to 2, suppose. Something you are in function like that. If you do what this, what you will get here? You will get t power 
3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 from the limit 0 to 2. That means t must go from 0 to 2. This equals to t power 4 by 4, the limit we write 0 to 2. Upper limit is 2, so it is 2 to power 4 by 4 minus 2 power 0 by 4. So that means this is 0. The entire limit becomes 0, 0 to the power 4, not 2. So, t is equal to 2 here, t is equal to 0 there. So, the entire thing becomes 0 now and we are left with 2 power 4 that is 16 by 4. The answer is 4. Like this, we can do any problem. What the problem we will do in the problems, what will you do? Take an example here. The acceleration of a body is changing with, is given by an acceleration the post here. You have to find out the acceleration. The, it is given that at t is equal to 0, uh, the velocity is 0 and displacement is x0 suppose, it is given like that. And you are asked to find out the uh, variation of acceleration is given there, it is going there as uh, a x q, a, a t cube is changing with the time, I put general equation here, a t cube plus b t square plus c t plus b. Earlier we must draw the graph or know it, but it is difficult to know the shape of the graph now here. So you can do this from the integration method here. Now you want to find out the velocity. When velocity, uh, I have to be between two things, average velocity, whatever you want, change in velocity you want, change in velocity we suppose, change in velocity from uh, t1 to t2 suppose you want. How will you do this? Integrate this. Because we have said, Differentiation of acceleration, differentiation of velocity dv by dt gives you acceleration. So now integration of acceleration should give you velocity. That change in velocity will come there. That will apply, we apply it here. So integration of acceleration from t1 to t2 dt. That is what you are supposed to find. How is that varying? That means what is that you have to integrate? You have to integrate this equation. That is a t cubed plus b t square plus c t plus d. It is to be integrated now with respect to time over the limits t1 to t2. You can separately integrate each term and then put them. You can write it like this t1 to t2 a t cubed dt plus integral b t square dt t1 to t2 plus integral c t t1 to t2 dt here plus integral d dt t1 to t2. You are supposed to integrate it. So, what we will get there is change in velocity you will get. Now, if you get what you get is this change in velocity whatever it is during that time because this is the acceleration function. In this applying the formula a, b, c, d are constants. They are constants. a, b, c, d are constants. Because constants are there, they cannot be any variation in them, they will be same. Just like in differentiation, constant cannot be tackled, they will be like that only. So, acceleration, the, the a will be here. So, here it is t power 4 by 4 because t cubed plus b, here t square, so it is t cubed by 3. Here c, t, n plus 1, that means t square by 2 plus d. There is d here, integration of dt is simply t there, 1 earlier. So, 1 power more will come there. So, here actually there is no power at all for t, 1 power will come there. So, this is d and that is t. That 1 by 1, t power 1 by 1, the same method. This must be in the limits t1 to t2. Then how to, what do you get here? This you will get this like this. A t2 to the power 4 by 4 plus b t2 to the power 3 by 3 plus c t2 to the power t square t2 square by 2 plus d t2. That is substituting the upper limit minus lower limit. A t power 4 by 4 that is t1 plus b t1 cubed by 3 plus c 
T1 square by 2 plus D, D T1. If you know the values actually if they are given numericals here, you can substitute the values for T, T2, A, B value, whatever they are and you can get the answer according to that. That is what is given in your modules. So like this you must be able to find out the instantaneous uh, or change in velocity from the integration of the acceleration equation. In the same way, you can also integrate the velocity equation and get the displacement there. Change in position. I give one example here to show you. Suppose the velocity of a body is changing according to the equation given there as some uh, a t plus b t square. Say. You are asked to find out the change in position. You want to find out change in position. That means displacement. That means you want to find out x minus x zero. When when t is equal to zero to uh, t is equal to five seconds. Say. Suppose you want to find out how to get it integrate this v with time from 0 to 5 seconds. That means integrate this a t plus b t square d t from 0 to 5 seconds. Integration gives you the same formula. a this is integrated so 1 power more will come t square by 2 will come. Here it is 1 power more t cubed by 3 will come. Integrate this between the limits 0 to 5. That means when t is equal to 5, what happens? We become this becomes 25 by 2 plus that becomes b into 125 by 3 minus when t is of substitute 0 here, lower limit here, this entire thing becomes 0, that also becomes 0. So that is what the limit is. Then you will get the answer from this. So it is 12.5 a plus this is. 125 by 3 can also put like this itself into b. This is the answer for x minus x0. What is x0? Position at t is equal to 0. So like this from velocity time integration, acceleration time integration of the equation of motion we can get the other term. When you integrate acceleration function you will get velocity term. When you integrate the velocity function you will get displacement there. That is what is the concept in this module. You can attempt the problems given in your module and then work it out. Thank you.